Hello, welcome to the virtual grocery store tour part two. My name is Kay McQueen and today we are going to be talking about fats. We'll also do a quick review of label reading 101. We will also review the healthy plate model and we'll talk about saturated trans and healthy fats. So everybody remembers the plate. Definitely aim for at least half your plate as veggies. 25% will be whole grains and 25% will be your meat and alternatives, particularly your plant-based alternatives such as tofu, beans, and lentils. So let's get started. How many grams of saturated fat is allowed for the day? Is it none, less than 10, 12 to 17, or greater than 20? And just to review, this is the Nutrition Facts panel. I've circled the area here where you see fat listed. You'll see, don't, um, it's got the total fat first, then it lists saturated, and then it lists trans. So this number here, we're always looking at the grams of saturated fat. This particular label shows zero grams of saturated fat. But the answer here is 12 to 17 grams of saturated fat per day up to a maximum of 20 grams. This represents approximately 7% of your total calorie intake. So for many of you who are eating more, you're gonna be allowed a little bit more of the saturated fat. For many of you who are eating a little less, that means you're gonna be eating on the lower end in terms of saturated fat. So let's look at pizza. This is always a good one to look at when we're talking about saturated fat and labels. This particular um, serving here, always look at the serving, one quarter of a pizza, 450 calories, six grams of saturated fat. So you might say six grams, not so bad. Um, maybe it's half for some of you, up to a third for some of you as well, but you think, ah, oh, it's not a bad price to pay for pizza. But remember, that's a quarter of a pizza. I don't think I could eat just a quarter of a pizza. Maybe you can, but if you eat half a pizza, many of you will reach your limit for saturated fat just by having a serving of pizza um, or significantly um, chip into the recommended amount. And this particular food isn't that necessarily that healthy, more of a treat. So be very, very mindful of portion sizes when you're looking at some of these foods, when you look at these actual six grams of saturated fat. On the nutrition facts panel, one teaspoon of fat is represented by A, four grams of fat, B, 20 grams of fat, C, 10 grams of fat, D, 100 milligrams of cholesterol. And we ask this question because we want you to be able to understand when you see four grams, what does that visually look like? So four grams of fat is equal to one teaspoon or it's equal to one pat of butter. So if you see 16 grams of fat, that means it's um, four teaspoons or four pats of butter, just to give you a bit of an, a visualization. So the answer here is four grams of fat. What cheese would you consider low fat? White cheese is always lower than orange cheese, light cheddar, less than 20% milk fat, or low fat cheese is too rubbery, I don't buy it. Well, let's take a look. Here we have some mild Gouda, a white cheese. Milk fat is 33%. Every one ounce of this cheese or 30 grams has seven grams of saturated fat. For those of you who cut lots of cheese or enjoy cheese, one ounce might not be very much for many of you. Just by having cheese on a daily basis, you'll probably be exceeding your recommended amount of, of saturated fat. But seven grams in this 33% milk fat cheese. Another white cheese, Borson, 39% milk fat. Don't get it confused with the um, moisture content. Um, you always look for the milk fat percentage two tablespoons, eight grams of saturated fat. Be very careful with cheese. But if you like cheese, you look for a lower fat cheese, less than 20%. Here's a part skim mozzarella, only three grams of saturated fat per, for every one, um, one ounce or 30 grams. So with cheese, if you really like cheese, we need you to limit it to no more than about 100 grams a week preferably use a low fat cheese, less than 20% milk fat. And if you like cheese, think about it as a condiment. Grate a little bit for flavor. Buy a little bit of that hard cheese like Parmesan and put it on your salad or on your sandwich, as opposed to slicing things off. 
If you don't know what 100 grams is, take a look. This represents 200 grams. Slice it, cut it in half. There's your 100 grams of cheese for the week. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. What cheese would you consider low fat? Well, anything less than 20%. And I am going to encourage you, not all low fat cheese is rubbery nowadays. And if you haven't tried some of the lower fat cheese out there, I would encourage you to do so. When buying yogurt, what do you look for on the label? Probiotics, milk fat percentage, sugar, or both B and C. So if you've been shopping lately for yogurt, there's so many different types of yogurts out there. Key, always look for 0%. 0% milk fat, 1% milk fat. Look for plain, look for plain. Here we have Olympic plain, but this is 11% milk fat, okay? Here we have source yogurt, it's 0%. Now what we've circled here, I apologize for the circles, it's basically saying they haven't added any additional sugar to it, so they're using a sugar substitute in this. This also is acceptable. But be very careful about the uh, Activia yogurts or any yogurt that has active probiotics. It might contain probiotics, but we don't know, you still have to check for the sugar content. Probiotics does not mean that it's low fat or low sugar. Okay, so you always have to check for that. Just like organic, just because it's organic doesn't mean it's good for you. This is 3.8% milk fat, higher than homogenized milk. So be very careful. Same thing with cottage cheese and your milk. 1% cottage cheese, great source of protein, by the way. And here's your milk, 1% and skim. Be mindful of cream and whipping cream. When you go out to the stores, they often, or restaurants, they give you 18% table cream. Um, here they give you, two, or you've got 2%. Always ask for milk. It will make a big difference. You want to stay away from the cremo and the whipping cream. When buying yogurt, what do you look for on the label? Obviously, the answer is both B and C. And probiotics, that's a personal choice, but this milk fat percentage and sugar is key in any type of yogurt that you look for. And I didn't mention that vanilla yogurt is sweetened with sugar unless it says it uses a sugar substitute. What cuts of meat are considered lean? Standing rib, loin, tenderloin, round, pork ribs, or lamb shoulder. Take a look at these pictures. If you look at the top left hand corner, we've got ground pork, a lot of white stuff in there. Compare that to the extra lean ground beef down below. Very little white, much leaner. Take a look at this pork chop, very lean. We can trim this visible fat compared to these pork ribs which are marbled and you can't really get rid of that. Take a look at the, some of the meat too. Be very mindful, look for meat that is not marbled. What we also have on here is processed meat such as bacon. We want you to stay away from and please make sure you remove the chicken skin when you eat chicken, okay? But these marbled processed meats, really, really high in that unhealthy saturated fat. We ask people to limit their red meat to no more than two times in a week. But what we do ask people to eat more of um, is fish because of the healthy heart omega-3 fats found in your fatty fish like salmon um, as well. But certainly buying frozen haddock is a good choice. Having some tuna at lunch, canned sardines, anything like this, make sure you're eating your fish at least two or three times a week. So what cut, cuts of meat are considered lean? loin, tenderloin, and round is your answer, but if you're unsure, just look at it. You'll be able to determine, has it got lots of marbling or is it nice and red with uh, very little fat around the sides? Meat close to the bone does tend to be fattier. What fats are healthy? Well, I think after talking about cheese and butter and all the um, high fat dairy products we want to take a look at the healthy fats so clearly i'll look at we'll look at the um, diagrams here of all the healthy fats um, nut butters um, only one tablespoon of peanut butter has only one gram of saturated fat there's almond butter avocado put that on salads put that on toast eat it with a spoon if you want to um, much better to use the peanut butter on crackers, avocado on toast, than it is to use the cheese. Um, 
Nuts make an excellent snack choice, very, very good for you, about a handful every day, quarter to a third of a cup of nuts every day. Um, healthy oils to use, avocado oil, olive oil. What we don't have up here is canola oil, also very healthy. And what we haven't mentioned is these non-hydrogenated margarines, these spreads such as base cell. There's only one gram of saturated fat in two teaspoons of this margarine. So if you need a spread, please use this and avoid the butter. Which foods contain trans fat? Trans fat is produced when we take liquid vegetable oil, which is good for us, and we turn it into a solid fat by a process called hydrogenation. And you end up with products like Crisco shortening, hard block margarines, used in baking. You'll always see trans fat in donuts, in pie crust, in fast food. So be very leery. It, we want people to limit to no more than two grams per day or even less. Basically, we try to tell people don't have any. So try to do your own baking, steer clear of the fast food, but trans fat is found in a lot of these types of foods. The other place, if you're looking on the label, when you see hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated, you know that product has trans fat in it. But I wanna show you the label here on this Crisco shortening which I just said had trans fat in it. Yes, it does. It's got hydrogenated oil in here. Trans fat, it says zero, but take a look at the volume, only two teaspoons. Think how much of this Crisco shortening you need to make a pie crust. So don't be fooled just because it says trans fat is zero. Look for that word hydrogenation, hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated. So the answer is all of the above. All these store-bought baked goods, um, fast food, shortenings, hard block margarines, all contain trans fat. Very unhealthy for your heart. So that concludes uh, this talk today. Stay tuned for future for future virtual grocery tours, um, where we'll be talking about beans, lentils, tofu, which are plant-based proteins, uh, sodium, sugar, and fruits and vegetables. Thank you so much.